All right, hello YouTube friends. Welcome back for another tying video. Today we're gonna tie a simple but important fly. This is a, a staple in my uh, fly boxes. It is uh, a pheasant tail, tied Euro style, uh, and it's a, it's a hot spot pheasant tail. You can tie this one uh, with or without the hot spot, uh, but today we're gonna go with, with the uh, fluorescent orange hotspot. So the one in the vise right now is a size 16 uh, jig style hook with a 2.8 slotted tungsten bead and copper. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to get this one out of the vise and uh, we're going to put in a new hook with a new bead, same same size, 16 uh, with a 2.8. And I'll go through the materials here as we tie this one up. So uh, to start, we're going to use, uh, today we're just going to use uh, UTC 70 in olive uh, to get us started. Uh, if you don't have this one, brown is fine. Uh, black, any dark color really. Um, you're not going to see a whole lot of the base thread. So we're going to start right behind the bead. And we're going to uh, wrap this down right to the curve of the hook. And bring it back a little bit and hang it off there. I think you'll notice in, in most of my tying videos, uh, I really try to minimize my thread wraps. Uh, a lot of people will build up a taper uh, with the thread. Uh, I, I try not to do that. I, I uh, am a big believer in keeping thin profiled flies uh, when I can. So um, again, I, I try not to overdo it with thread wraps. All right. Here is the next material we're going to use. It is a small size, and I think that's important for this one, in copper. Uh, that's going to match the, the bead. I don't really know if the trout care about that, but as a fly tire, I'd like to try to match that. Um, and uh, I, I like the small size here. I think even if I were tying this in a 14, I'd probably still use uh, the small. Maybe not until I got up into a 12 what I think about using the brassy for this particular one because I don't want a lot of flash in it um, and I want I want those little microfibers of the pheasant tail to stick out so all right uh, in most of my euro style nymphs uh, the first step is to tie the tail in but uh, when you're doing a pheasant tail I actually put uh, the wire in first so I'm going to just tie that off uh, with three wraps and and hold it there uh, the next part is I'm going to use my pheasant tail and I'm gonna I'm gonna splay that out uh, until I get three fibers uh, that I like the looks of. I want to look at the tips, and uh, I want I want three fibers, and I'll show you what that looks like here. Uh, these three fibers are the ones that I'm gonna cut. I'm gonna cut them right at the base, uh, just so I have as much material to work with as possible. And again, I like three fibers because I like. Uh, the, the way that that makes the tail look with three fibers coming out, it gives it a natural look and it also helps me to keep the body of the fly nice and thin. So with a pinch wrap, I'm going to tie in my tail and I'm going to take a look at it and I'm going to say, well, that's a little longer than I want. So I'm going to adjust that uh, to, the, to the perfect spot there that I want. All right. Next step, you're going to bend that pheasant tail back. Just be really, really careful. That pheasant tail will break. All right, and we're going to wrap up to the bead. I'm going to turn the bead, make sure it's going the right way, and then I'm going to put my thread right into that slot. And that helps me lock it in, and then I hang my thread right on the cradle. Uh, if you want, you could start wrapping uh, right now, but I like to, because pheasant tail can be a little brittle, uh, that's where I like to use super glue. So I'm going to be using some Loctite super glue. Love this one. It's got the triggers on the side so you can um, you can just put out a, the tiniest little bit of it and you really have control over it. So uh, I don't want a lot. I don't want to coat my pheasant tail, um, but I just want something. Uh, I want it to have something there to stick to. So uh, I'm going to begin my wrapping of my pheasant tail. I'm going to be really, really careful around the bend of that hook. If you nick the, the or the, the point of that hook, rather, uh, it'll break the pheasant tail right off. So, all right, we're going to wrap this one. Just taking my time. Gets easy to rush this, but I'm just going to take my time. I'm going to get up to the bead. I'm going to lock that bead in with an extra wrap. All right. And now I'm going to tie that off. 
right, just getting my thread there. Hold that up, I'm gonna come back once, box it in, twice, and then one in front. And I'm gonna get in here and I'm gonna cut that off, okay? So now, for the next part, uh, I'm gonna be counter wrapping my wire. And the reason you wanna counter wrap it is because that really helps to lock the pheasant tail down and in. So if you go the other way with your rotations, take that up, nice even wraps, nice and slow. All right. And uh, I'm gonna tie that off now, same way. All right. Helicopter that off. So at this point, I'm going to whip finish with the olive thread. A uh, number of things you can do at this point. Uh, I mean, you, you can fish the fly just like that. Uh, I actually would recommend tying some like that as you're doing these and throw some of these in your box just like that because uh, just a plain fly sometimes I find with heavily pressured fish. Uh, or, or you know real finicky fish uh, this this will do it sometimes the hot spot will turn them off um, so I like to, to do this in both you can put the hot spot in in this a number of ways um, you could use a, a collar like a, a ice dubbing collar to make uh, a Frenchie out of this uh, today we're going to use though uh, just some thread to make a hot spot we're going to use a fluorescent orange uh, I just I love this color this is one of my confidence colors I find that it works uh, pretty well, so I'm just going to uh, keep it small though, keep it subtle, and uh, I'm going to get some thread wraps around there in the orange, and put some tension on that and snip it, so I'll have a big tag hanging out there, and then uh, I'm actually going to use some Loon Flow, and uh, that's this right here, Loon Flow, I'm going to apply the Loon Flow right to the thread, that's going to give the orange a little bit of shine, uh, but it's also going to give it some durability. So I'm going to keep that right up at the head uh, or of the fly, at the bead. Put a couple more turns in there, and now I'm going to whip finish it. Okay, again, I'm going to just keep some tension. Give that a nice cut. Last step, hit that with... And there you go. You get a good look at that fly. Uh, when you're fishing these jig style flies, uh, think about your tippet being tied there. Um, this is the way they ride in the water. Um, and, and one of the reasons I like to fish a lot of jig styles, uh, the way they ride in the water, uh, you can see they, they get hung up less because the point of the hook is, is riding upward. So I find I get a lot less snags. Um, and uh, that, that helps you stay in the game and, and keep your fly in the water. So again, Everybody, thank you. Hopefully you enjoyed this one. Trying to make these quicker, so uh, hopefully I'm not over explaining things, but just want to make sure I'm taking my time so uh, you can see these are, these are generally easy patterns. Uh, once you learn this pattern, this gives you the opportunity to tie lots and lots of different variations of this fly. So I uh, hope you enjoyed it. If you like what we're doing at TroutStrike.com, make sure you visit. Uh, give us a thumbs up. Uh, and subscribe to the YouTube channel. So everybody, make sure you're getting out on the water and have a great day.